thanks for taking the time to uh, visit us. Uh, I'm Randy Hengst and I do advise all the L ed. I'm the director of elementary ed and Macy Hancock is um, one of our seniors. Luckily she finished student teaching in the fall so we're not having to face the uh, distance student teaching. We've got a couple doing that so that's interesting. But um, anyway, jump in anytime you have a question, even though I'm gonna just sort of give you the basic overall, um, then I can answer questions about sequence of courses if you have them. Macy can give you some real scoop about life as a student at Augie. So feel free to jump in anytime, because I do realize how stressful this process of selecting a college is, um, especially in our current virtual state. I even remember helping my, uh, my kids look for college. My youngest is a senior at Augie. And um, even though I'm in the business and I know questions to ask, we still had questions after he visited with folks and same thing with my middle kids. So don't think somehow you're gonna learn everything today and uh, not have any questions. So the LED licensure in Illinois, uh, when you go through our program, you will be licensed to teach grades one through six in a self-contained setting. What that means is you can't be in middle school teaching just math and middle school can be fifth grade, sixth, seventh or eighth. You could be in a middle school if it's a self-contained kind of setting for fifth or sixth grade, even if they call it a middle school. Generally middle schools, as you know, have a teacher for language arts, a teacher for uh, math, etc. So you would be grades one through six, not kindergarten, um, just one through six. Uh, we do have an option to add a reading teacher endorsement. That's pretty confusing because that's actually more than grades one through six. Macy's living through that right now, so she can give you a little scoop about that in terms of um, if the questions came up during her uh, interviews, fact that she could actually teach reading in kindergarten but couldn't teach the whole classroom thing in kindergarten and she could actually be a reading teacher in a high school. So that's a little bizarre to think about so don't don't think beyond oh good I could be a reading teacher in elementary school. That's not the same thing as being the pullout reading teacher and teaching other teachers. So, But at Augie you'll become part of a program. Fall of your sophomore year you start the ed sequence and pretty much you have ed courses from then on. You'll be with the same basic group of um, LED folks uh, starting in the fall of your sophomore year. And as you move through the methods courses, the spring of your, your sophomore year, you'll have your first field experience as part of our methods of inclusion course. Uh, your junior year, there are field experiences down at Longfellow School, which is like two and a half, three blocks away. Uh, that happens all year, two or three days a week, kind of depends on the schedule of that semester. Um, but you end up with close to 40 hours each semester. We integrate our courses real well. We have a specific sequence that you'll take that's on purpose, which means when you get to course three, we expect you to already know the stuff in courses one and two. Um, we'll hold you accountable for remembering that stuff. You can hold us accountable for, hey, Randy, remember when we did this in the other course, how does that tie in now? So the fact that we have them all integrated makes it seem like one big program, not uh, a bunch of little courses you just check off the box for. Then the um, student teaching is your senior year and uh, with rare exceptions, you'll be supervised by someone in our department that you already know and have worked with. So um, I, I supervise Macy's student teaching. So if she needs to talk about her supervisor, I'll block my ears or something and she can tell you the real scoop. Um, and then, in fact, I supervised almost all of the student teachers this year, just as we shifted to our semesters, which you may not know, this is our first year doing that. But I earned my, my LED at a big university, University of Oklahoma, rough to have small classes. Here you'll have small classes in your ed, ed group. I don't, let's see, Macy, what do you have? 17, 18? 18. 18. Our current sophomores, there are 16 in the LED sequence. Same thing with the juniors. Um, some of the science lectures could get up to 50, well, no, 40. Um, but then you have labs of 20. So for us, 40 is a big class. Um, I don't, I can't remember more than a couple times having more than 24 in a class. And I've, I've been here all of your life. So uh, in all of your life, I can barely remember having more than 24 in an ed class. 
but we coordinate them with the um, methods courses, like I said, so, I'm sorry, with the clinical. So you'll be taking methods courses uh, beginning sophomore year, spring, you'll take them all junior year, you have clinicals with them. The teachers at Longfellow that you'll be working with know that we have the methods courses going, so there'll be ways to uh, hold us accountable in the methods courses when you say to us, well, you know, Randy, they're doing this in the school, how come we're not talking about that? So there are ways for us to connect the um, ideas that you'll be considering in methods courses specifically with what's going on in a classroom. We don't have an ESL program at Augie. Sometimes that people ask that question, but at Longfellow, a large majority of the students are learning English as a second language. So you'll have plenty of opportunity to work with kiddos whose first language is not English. And you'll get to develop some of your skills and certainly awareness of the struggles that uh, are part of learning English and learning content all at the same time. Our fall um, methods courses of your junior year includes math methods. And we've been, oh gosh, for six or eight years now, we've been working with kindergartners and math. And Macy has done some extra with that. So when we need to talk a little bit about the kindergarten number sense project with the math method, methods, um, okay, start thinking Macy, cause you're gonna be uh, yelling at us about it. <laughs> And then I mentioned the reading teacher endorsement as an option that will include uh, five additional credits in reading, uh, two extra courses and one extra clinical. And the, that'll happen, those extra courses in clinical will actually happen after student teaching. And um, most student teachers end up, I mean, sorry, most folks doing the reading teacher endorsement end up going back to their uh, student teaching site for their clinical. Uh, that doesn't happen in every case. In fact, Macy went to a different place to get another experience and got to work well for what, three weeks or four weeks yeah, or whatever it was with um, one of our grads. So that was kind of fun. That was pretty quick. I can't think of anything overt I left out, but I do want Macy to talk about the number sense uh, experience with the kindergartners that just starts with the math class. So Macy, why don't you give us a little number sense scoop? Yeah, so um, junior year, we do our math methods class and we make lesson plans and then we're able to actually use the lesson plans with the kindergarten students over at Longfellow. Um, a lot of it is getting data, analyzing it, and then changing our lesson plans the next time we go back, seeing what works. We follow a lot of Longfellow's curriculum. So whatever they need to be whatever the students need help with is what we're trying to help them with. Um, we work with some students who have more needs. We work with some students who are excelling in the, um, in their grades. And then after that junior year, there's actually opportunities that you can go back to Longfellow and continue working with the kindergartners. Um, and it's called number sense. So it's just, I mean, what it says, having the students learn, you know, the basics of the numbers and corresponding letter or numbers with what they see in addition. And it's just additional help that Longfellow lets us do with the kindergartners. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have some questions that you really need answered? Macy can attest that that's probably the longest lecture she's ever heard me give, so. <laughs> All right, if we're not getting a lot of questions from uh, from the audience right now, um, I'll go ahead and start asking them as well. I'm great at asking questions. So, oh, okay, um, great. <laughs> Macy, can you talk about your cohort a little bit? Um, the other elementary ed students that you work with regularly, um, I think you had mentioned the size of it, but maybe go over that again, but also um, how you're able to work together. Yeah, so um, like Augustana is a pretty small school. My elementary ed class, so the seniors this year, we have 18, technically one graduated in December, so we have 17. But when you start taking classes sophomore year, you get very close with your class. Um, I think my junior year, I had all my classes with those 18 students. So personally, I liked it because you get to know each other better, you feel comfortable with each other. Um, you're able to collaborate with each other just like you would do in a school when you start teaching. Um, definitely create that like elementary ed community and family. 
Um, our professors are super close. Um, you can go to them with anything and they'll be there for you. So I love that like we're such small and we're so close because we can benefit from each other. The um, entrance to the ed program uh, begins with that first course in the fall and um, you need a GPA of 3.0 at the end of your first year to start. But once you're in the program and maintain your grade point, you've got a, a seat, if you will, in every ed course. So you don't literally have to worry about, will I get into the next ed course in the next semester? Um, I guarantee you, you won't get uh, the poli-sci course necessarily exactly when you want it, or the psych course exactly when you want it, or the religion course. Um, there are times when you have to think, okay, over the whole year, I need to get this, this, and this, and then you'll have a variety of ways to get that done. Uh, but once, once you're in the ed program, you've got the ed courses taken care of. So that does take a little bit of the stressor off uh, following through and completing the major. Mm -hmm. All right, um, our next question then, um, Macy, we'll start with you again here. Um, were you able to study abroad in your time at Augustana? Um, so I did, I used my Augie choice, but I didn't really study abroad. I was um, selected to go to the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind with two other education students and one of our education professors. Um, we spent a week there. We were able to go in the classrooms, um, learn all about that, and then actually this, the beginning of this year, right before um, second semester started, us three students and our professor went to a conference in Portland, Oregon to present our research from that. So I did not do the education study abroad, but a lot of my friends did. So that's to Jamaica. So I don't know. Randy, do you want to? Yeah, we have um, two education professors that do trips, if you will. Um, but they're during our J term in January. Um, there is no honest, honestly, there is no time to take an entire semester and study away and complete in four years. So our study away, um, the J Jamaica is during the January, one of our other profs uh, organizes a trip to Norway and they've been going on every other year. Um, I mean, I can't promise that's how it's going to be for the next 10 years, but that's been the pattern. And then there are other study away opportunities during the J term. So if you are interested in going on a trip in, in our J term, odds are really, really good that we can pull that off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then there's also a little bit about athletics in that same question from Connor. Um, I know Connor pretty well. We've met several times actually. Um, and so um, what a lot of our students will do is they'll utilize the summer months um, and that January term to use those study abroad um, opportunities, or at least to use our Augie choice on some of those opportunities. Um, and so especially um, being a member of two sports, those summer months might work out really well to find an individual program um, through our core office, um, which I could see happening. So um, I'll roll over to our next question. Randy, do you wanna tackle this one? Um, and so it's how would double majoring work with education? Yeah, let me back up just a little bit on the, uh, the athletic question. Um, if you can't um, use your Augie choice for a study away, you get to use it during student teaching. So you, you really can't get out of Augie without using your uh, Augie choice unless you just refuse to fill out paperwork, um, which isn't a lot of fun. I totally agree, but hey, it's too grand. What can you say? Um, so we really encourage folks not to work during student teaching. And depending on how your other finances work out, for many of our students, that's the best time to take Augie Choice, even if they do a study away during a J term. Thank you. Uh, for and, and for we do have a couple of juniors in the room here today, too. Um, so just to go over, Augie Choice is a program through Augustana where every student is eligible for a $2,000 um, stipend to use on an outside of the classroom learning experience. And so when we, when we talk about Augie Choice, some students will use it when they study away. Um, some will use it while they student teach. Um, you have an option of when to use it throughout your career. Um, and so you do have access to that just to make sure everyone knows the, the Augie choice. So um, we'll roll into the next question in, on um, double majoring and how that would work with education. It doesn't. <laughs> That's about as simple and straightforward as I can get. There is, there is no way to double major with LED doesn't mean you can't explore other things and doesn't mean you can't perhaps do a minor, but that really depends on what the area might be. But you won't, 
you will not be able to double major and complete in four years. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat that. That's just the harsh reality. Uh, that's really never been an option since I've been here. It's just there are too many things that uh, the state has laid out for us in terms of what you have to do to earn your license or complete the licensure process. So if you're interested in wondering, oh, could I take any classes in uh, and stop thinking of majors, but think of areas of interest. Um, we have students who have minored in theater. I've had students who've minored in Spanish, but then they've done the Ecuador trip in the summer. So there are ways to do more than just the major, but if your heart is set on a double major, let's, let's just break that right now. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, our next question um, would be about question. would be about certification. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. I have a, like a question going along with that. So I want to like double with major and elementary to be like an elementary music teacher. So like, how does that work? Well, then actually, you're not going through the elementary ed program. You would go through the music ed program, and in the music ed program, you could be a music teacher in an elementary school. Uh, but you wouldn't be a classroom teacher in an elementary school. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. Thank and, you. Yep. And I can send some specific music ed information to you as well. Actually, my student worker is a junior music ed major here at Augustana, so I'll be able to connect you guys for sure. Yeah, that'll be great. Awesome. All righty. Um, and so certification, um, will I be certified to teach in Illinois is the question we got. Yeah, yeah, that's the grades one through six, that the license. Technically, it's called a license, but. And what if they wanted to be outside of the state of Illinois once they graduate? What would that process look like? It depends on the state you're going to. Each state has its own little thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't always know all the changes that they go through. Uh, obviously, being where we are, we have a lot of folks that end up uh, going over to Iowa. Um, and it's not an automatic thing, but it's a pretty easy thing, uh, relatively speaking. Um, right now, Iowa accepts the ed TPA uh, as evidence of completion. They don't make you take their test if you have the, their score. So there's always some nuance, but uh, every place our students have gone, they've at least gotten the one, sometimes two year provisional license that is called in many places um, so that you can get the ball rolling and the state there tells you, well, you'll need X, Y, and Z before we can give you your standard license. Mm -hmm. That's a wide, wide range, and I haven't kept up totally, but um, there, I think it still exists, the national teacher's exam. Anyway, when I finished my doctorate at Madison, this was a while ago, um, and I was going out to Idaho to be an elementary principal, um, I had to take the national teacher's exam, even though I had completed my PhD and had already been licensed in other states. So each state has its own little, little thing but we have students heading down to Texas this coming year and Wisconsin is pretty common. So is Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, so another question that came in was uh, you'd said that graduating with an elementary ed degree allows you to teach first grade to middle school. What if you wanted to teach kindergarten? Well, first it doesn't allow you to teach middle school. It allows you to teach grades one through six in a self-contained setting. If you have a school that's five, six, seven, eight, and their fifth and sixth grade is self-contained, then you could teach there, but you can't teach middle school per se. Uh, and kindergarten, you need an early childhood um, major. The state has a whole different licensure program for early childhood. Um, as I recall, that goes through second grade, birth to second grade. We don't have that. So while I don't wanna drive away business, um, I can't promise you that we could organize something that you could be licensed to be in kindergarten. We do think it's important that anyone who would teach elementary school has a sense of what goes on in kindergarten, which is why that number sense project and the math methods includes work with kindergartners, but that doesn't get you a leg up on getting licensed in, in kindergarten. Thank you. Um, if you guys have any other questions from Macy, feel free to drop those down as well. Um, one for me, Macy, we've talked about Longfellow Elementary several times. I know you guys have both mentioned it. Could you share a little bit more information about Longfellow, um, the access that Augustana students have to it, its proximity to campus? 
Yeah, so Augustana actually has a partnership with Longfellow. Um, they have had one for how many years, Randy? Let's go with 10. 10 years. Um, so if you've been to campus and you're, um, it's just three blocks away. So we do a lot of our clinicals there, like Randy talked about earlier. Um, there's a lot of um, different volunteering that we can do there. Uh, I know we just have a really good partnership with them and they're able to help us get our clinical hours in. And Yeah, students participate in um, parent nights. Um, oh gosh, also, we've done the book sale nights. We've done cookout nights. I mean, there's all, all sorts of ways that our students can be involved and see the broader picture of life in school beyond just the classroom that you're working with. And they love Augustana students to come help and they're constantly asking for volunteers and any help that we can give them, so. All right, thank you, Macy. Um, from the, the crowd here, any other questions that you guys have um, that you're wondering about, um, feel free, you can even unmute and ask away um, if you want. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and, and we'll probably wrap up um, this session. Um, we certainly thank you guys for, for tuning in and, and being a part of our conversation. Um, and definitely a thank you to, to Randy and Macy for taking some time out of their afternoon um, to kind of help enlighten um, all of us on, on elementary ed. So um, if you have a question, um, go ahead and fire away. Otherwise, feel free to log off um, and then um, we'll go ahead and conclude the event. Thanks, guys. So Mark, will you send them all my email if they have other follow-up questions? Yes, we'll send a, a final report with, uh, with their email address, uh, with your email address to them. All right, good, good. So feel free to holler if you have a question. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you all.